The general equation of a conic section is this, where a, b, c, d, e, and f are real numbers. If b is not equal to zero, the conic section is rotated. And these are messy and require special handling, so we'll initially focus on the b equal to zero conics. Given an equation in this form, we can transform it into an equation in standard form by completing the squares on x and y. So for example, let's find the center and eccentricity of the conic section with this equation, and then sketch a graph. So we'll complete our squares, and so we'll rearrange this so our x terms are together and our y terms are together. And it will be convenient to factor out the coefficient of our x squared and our y squared. So we'll factor 4 from our x terms, and 9 from our y terms. So to complete the square on x squared, we need to add 4, and to pay for it, we'll subtract 4. Similarly, we'll complete our square on y squared, do a little algebra, Now, because our square terms are added, this is some sort of an ellipse, but in our ellipse, the constant term needs to be 1. So we'll divide both sides by 25. Again, for our standard form of an ellipse, we don't have a coefficient in front of the square term, so we'll multiply numerator and denominator by 1 fourth. Similarly, for the standard form of an ellipse, the y squared term doesn't have a coefficient, so multiply numerator and denominator by 1 ninth. And our denominator is usually the square of something, so we'll rewrite those denominators. And so we see that this equation corresponds to the ellipse x squared divided by 5 halves squared plus y squared divided by 5 thirds squared equal to 1, translated 2 units to the left and 1 unit upward. For an ellipse, remember the eccentricity is c divided by a, where a is the length of the semi-major axis, and c, the focal length, is a squared minus b squared. So we'll compute. and find our eccentricity. So this is a translation of this ellipse, and so for this ellipse, we have vertices, and we also find some other points the ellipse passes through. So we can graph it. And then we translate it, two units to the left, and one unit upward. This moves the center to negative 2, 1, and the eccentricity remains the same. Or we can try and find the focus and directrix of the conic section with this equation, and try to sketch the graph. Now since there's no y squared term, we can't complete the square on y, but we can still complete the square on x. So completing the square on x, it's probably easiest if we declutter the x terms and get rid of this constant. And we can complete the square by adding 9, and factorization. So this is the parabola 8y equals x squared, shifted 3 units to the right, and down 2 units. Now remember that the coefficient of y is 4p, and so p is equal to 2. And this tells us that the focus will be located 2 units above the vertex, and the directrix will be a horizontal line, two units below the vertex. So if we take our parabola and shift it right three units and down two units, this will place our focus at three zero and the directrix at y equal negative four. 
or we could try another one. So let's complete our square. Again, it's convenient to factor out the coefficient of our x squared and our y squared. So factoring 25 from our x and x squared terms We'll need to be a little bit more careful here. We want to factor a negative 9 from our y squared and y terms. We'll complete the square. Do a lot of algebra. And we get our equation of a hyperbola in standard form. And again, it's convenient to rewrite our denominators as the squares of something. So we see that this is the graph of x squared divided by 3 squared minus y squared divided by 5 squared shifted 2 units to the right and 1 unit downward. And we can find the asymptotes. We find two points the hyperbola passes through, and we can sketch our graph. We find our focal distance, and so our foci are located square root 34 away from the center in the horizontal direction. And when we translate, all features undergo the same translations. And so the foci will move to 